Hello students, this is Perio Chapter 7, Lecture 1, Introduction to Local Contributing Factors. Local contributing factors are oral conditions that increase an individual's susceptibility to periodontal infection in individual teeth or surfaces of a tooth. Disease sites are individual teeth or specific surfaces of a tooth that are experiencing periodontal disease. Local contributing factors include dental calculus, faulty dental restorations, de and dental decay. Local contributing factors do not initiate periodontal disease. They contribute to the process already initiated by the bacterial biofilm. They may increase the risk of developing disease and they may increase the risk of developing more severe disease. Three ways local contributing factors increase the risk of disease is by increasing biofilm retention such as on the rough edge on a restoration increasing biofilm pathogenicity, such as biofilm-covered calculus deposits, and they can cause direct damage to the periodontium, such as a heavy chewing forces on a tooth. Local factors that increase biofilm retention include dental calculus and tooth morphology, or the shape of the tooth. This is figure 7.1 on page 123 of your textbook. Dental calculus is the most obvious example of a local contributing factor that can lead to increased plaque biofilm retention. Dental calculus is mineralized bacterial plaque biofilm covered on its external surface by non-mineralized living bacterial plaque biofilm. Mineralization of plaque biofilm can begin from 48 hours to up to two weeks after plaque biofilm formation. Calculus deposits at the microscopic level are quite irregular. They include irregular surfaces, ledges on the teeth, and other alterations to the contour of the teeth. Since a layer of living bacterial plaque biofilm always covers a calculus deposit, dental calculus plays a significant role as a local contributing factor in periodontal disease. As calculus builds up, it becomes irregular, forming ledges on the teeth, making plaque control difficult. Plaque retention on irregular calculus, calculus increases the risk for disease. Controlling disease in the presence of biofilm and calculus is difficult. Calculus can attach to the tooth surface by attaching to the pellicle, attaching to irregularities in the tooth surface, or by direct contact of the calcified component and the tooth surface. Calculus can attach to tooth surfaces by attaching directly to the calcified component of the tooth. In this mode of attachment, the matrix of the calculus deposit is interlocked with the inorganic crystals of the tooth. Deposits firmly interlocked in the tooth surface are usually very difficult to remove. Attachment of calculus to the pellicle is easily removed because the attachment is on the surface of the pellicle and is not locked to the tooth. Calculus deposits in cracks in the tooth surface, tiny openings from the PDL detachment, or grooves in the cementum from over-instrumentation those deposits are difficult to remove because they lie sheltered in tooth defects. Deposits that are firmly interlocked in the tooth are difficult to remove. The morphology or surface features of a tooth can increase biofilm retention. These include 
poorly contoured restorations, untreated tooth decay, and grooves or concavities in the tooth surface itself. This is an example of a poorly contoured restoration. See the distal of tooth number 19 and the bone loss that is associated with that overhang. It is difficult or even impossible for the patient to remove biofilm effectively from the tooth surface, which is adjacent to an overhang. Difficulties in cleaning the tooth surface results in biofilm retention and can lead to increased severity of disease. This untreated decay leaves a hole in the tooth surface that harbors periodontal pathogens and allows them to grow undisturbed by self-care efforts. Developmental grooves and root concavities lead to difficulty in patient self-care at that site. A developmental groove on the palatal surface of a tooth is called a palatogingival groove. Naturally occurring root concavities harbor bacteria, increasing incidence of disease. This is a, an image of a palatogingival groove on a lateral incisor in the maxillary. This image shows a mesial root concavity on a maxillary first premolar. The concavity located in a deep periodontal pocket will be almost impossible for the patient to clean. Floss will not dislodge the biofilm from the base of a root concavity. Interdental brushes can effectively remove the biofilm. Recap of local contributing factors. These are oral conditions that increase an individual's susceptibility to periodontal infection at specific sites in the mouth. A disease site is an individual tooth or specific surfaces of a tooth that are experiencing periodontal disease. Local contributing factors may increase disease risk by increasing biofilm retention. Local factors that may cause increase in biofilm retention include dental calculus deposits, poorly contoured restorations, untreated tooth decay, tooth grooves, and root concavities. Three ways local contributing factors increase the risk of disease is by increasing biofilm retention, increasing biofilm pathogenicity, and direct damage to the periodontium. Ways in which local factors increase biofilm retention was discussed in the previous section. This presentation discusses ways in which a local factor may increase biofilm retention or cause direct damage to the periodontium. Biofilm maturation and pathogenicity. Pathogenicity is the ability of the bacteria in a biofilm to produce periodontal disease. A mature plaque biofilm is more pathogenic than the biofilm that first developed on the tooth surface because the types of bacteria in the biofilm change as the biofilm matures. The thick biofilm at the gingival margin of these teeth has been present for several weeks. This mature biofilm is more pathogenic than a newly formed plaque biofilm. Plaque biofilm that is allowed to grow undisturbed is said to mature. As the biofilm matures, it becomes colonized with large numbers of gram-negative periodontal pathogens. <clears throat> Factors that cause direct damage to the periodontium include food impaction, patient habits, faulty restorations, and occlusal forces. As this page, patient chews food, the food is forced between the teeth and produces direct damage to the periodontium. Food impaction can strip gingival tissues away from the tooth surface. 
It can lead to alterations in gingival contour, resulting in interdental areas that are difficult for the patient to clean. Patient habits such as improper use of self-care aids and tough tongue thrusting or mouth breathing. Here is an example of damage caused by misuse of a toothpick. This is damage caused by a tongue thrust. This is a very important point that most people miss. Encroachment on biologic width. A crown margin that is closer than 2 millimeters to the crest of the alveolar bone can result in resorption of the alveolar bone and pain to the patient. The biologic width is the space on the tooth surface occupied by the junctional epithelium and the connective tissue fibers. You can see the biologic width extending from the crest of the alveolar bone to the gingival sulcus. This crown margin is approximately one millimeter from the alveolar bone. The distance is too close to allow for normal soft tissue attachment to the tooth. Bulky crowns can result in inadequate space between the teeth. This papilla is enlarged because it is being pushed from between the teeth. Faulty removable prostheses can cause damage to the gingival tissue by impingement or because of biofilm accumulation. Here are examples of damage done to the tissues by poorly fitting partial denture. Direct damage from occlusal forces. Excessive occlusal forces include functional occlusal forces, which are normal forces produced during the act of chewing food, or parafunctional occlusal forces, which result from tooth-to-tooth -tooth contact when not in the act of eating, such as during clenching or bruxism. Parafunctional occlusal forces can exert excessive force on the teeth and on the periodontium. Therapy may include occlusal adjustment or night guards. Trauma from occlusion is an excessive occlusal force that causes damage to the periodontium. It can cause tooth mobility, sensitivity to pressure, migration of teeth, enlarged funnel-shaped PDL space, and alveolar bone resorption. This image shows loss of alveolar bone along the lateral surfaces on the tooth in the middle of the x-ray. Primary occlusal trauma is injury to the periodontium resulting from excessive occlusal force and can be caused by restorations that are excessively high, excessive force on abutment teeth from partial dentures, and the changes seen are wider periodontal ligament, tooth mobility, and pain. Changes are reversible if the trauma is removed. Secondary occlusal trauma is injury to the periodontium from normal occlusal forces applied to a periodontium that has previously been damaged by periodontitis. Secondary occlusal trauma may result in rapid bone loss and pocket formation. This concludes Perio Chapter 7, Lecture 1.